I am Jerry. And I'm Jill. And we are the Cruising Canucks. And today we like you to join us for what we're calling our new episodes of Suitcase Diaries. That's where we are going to interview people that have just recently come back from a cruise vacation or any type of vacation and let us know how that experience was so you can learn a little bit more to see if you want to do the same thing. Right. And today we're very happy to start off with our first special guest. Yes. If you follow us along on our channel, you'll know that we just came off of a beautiful sky princess for a family wedding. And so joining us today is the bride, our daughter. Let's welcome her. Hi. 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 How are you? So this is Mackenzie. And uh, she is back. We are actually all back from her wedding cruise. We are. So we're going to talk to her today and find out how this wedding went from the bride's perspective. Right. And so we did a seven-day Sky Princess cruise out of Fort Lauderdale. And it went down and stopped at Cozumel, Roatan, Belize, and Costa Maya. Mm -hmm. And we had 50 Canadians on board for this cruise. We did. So a lot of moving pieces. So we were curious to see how, how it went for the bride. We know how it went for us, but right. we didn't have as much stress as she did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of you have asked what, what our opinion was of the week, and so we thought it was probably a very fitting time to bring in Mackenzie and ask what it felt like for her, because it was definitely uh, something that she has been more uh, involved in than we were. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I guess the first question is, why Princess Cruises for your wedding? Was there a reason? Um. Well... At the time that we were planning the wedding, my fiance, my husband now, and I, we looked at every different cruise line. Um, I have done many carnivals, so I thought that would be the way to go. Um, but then when we looked at our demographic, for the most part, of who was coming, we started to lean towards the Holland America. And then we thought maybe that that would be too um, mature for our friends and um wedding party that were coming that were more in our age group. So my fiance's dad, my husband has done some <laughs> princess cruises. So I um, still feel weird saying that. Yeah, I'm still getting used to, <laughs> still getting used to that. Um, <laughs> but he's done lots of some princess and his family's done lots of princess and it was my first one. So the ship matched the look that we wanted for our wedding day. So we thought we would just give it a shot. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it was a beautiful ship. So was that that was part of the uh, decision to go with the Sky Princess was the the uh, decor? Yeah, we wanted something that was light and bright. Um, the Sky Princess, the Piazza is beautiful. And once I saw that, I, I knew that that was where we needed to have our wedding. Um, it was just so big and grand and a little over the top. Um, but it was just perfect for our wedding day. Nice. And before we get to whether or not it was the right choice or not, we'll save that a little bit later to see how it went. But um, so let's talk about you're traveling with 50 people. They're all traveling from Canada by airplane, getting down to Florida for a cruise. How yeah. did that all go? And how was it as the bride trying to bring down everything you'd need for a wedding on a plane with the limits you have and the restrictions and getting all the way down to Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, so that um, that played a big part in our wedding favors. We um, did little small objects that were big enough just to, for us to put in a carry-on. Um, so that was another thing. We wanted to make sure we had things that we were allowed to carry on. The traveling down to Fort Lauderdale was probably the most stressful vacation I have ever taken. Um, we flew out of Pearson along with many of our family that were coming. So. I've seen a lot of scary things coming out of Pearson over the past few months. So I was very nervous that luggage wouldn't make it or planes would get canceled. Um, but I'm very thankful that everybody made it and everybody's suitcase made it. My, my yeah, there was, was carrying a 20 pound wedding dress through Pearson, oh, true. through Fort Lauderdale and then back. Um, so, so when you carry on a wedding dress, do you get first class out of that? How does that work? Actually, I was very um, shocked that the airline that we went through um, did nothing for me. I got on the ship and I said, or sorry, the plane, and I said, where can I put my wedding dress? And she said, oh, just um, stick it up in the overhead bin when everybody else gets on. 
<laughs> and I said, my wedding dress, my <laughs> the most precious thing I'm going to put on my body. I have to put it with stranger suitcases. Luckily, I lucked out that my father-in-law and my two brother-in-laws um, filled an overhead bin. So I just put it on top of theirs. So I knew nobody else would be grabbing at it. But I was not happy that there was nothing they could do to help me with this big dress. Mm. <laughs> and sure. so you arrive safely, the dress arrives safely, everybody gets to Fort Lauderdale. So that was a win right off the bat. At that point, we yeah. knew the, the, the party, the wedding was going to happen. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> sure felt a lot less stress once we started receiving text messages from everybody saying they landed and they were at their hotel and all of that. So what happened after that? The, the, uh, bring us to embarkation and getting on the cruise. What did that look like for you and everybody that you had coming with you? Um, so that for us, that was quite simple. Um, we had a shuttle from our hotel to the cruise port, to Port Everglades, and we were staying at our hotel with probably almost half of the wedding guests um, all ended up staying at that hotel too. So we all took multiple shuttles. Um, my husband and I got there kind of first and I accidentally got into the priority line not realizing it was a priority line until I was almost in the building, but the staff was just like, it's fine, just stay, it's okay. So they were great about that. Cause I'm like, oh my God, now I have to join the end of the long line. Um, <laughs> and then after that, when we went to check in and get our medallions, the um, system shut down. So we had to wait maybe about 10 minutes for them to get that booted back up and get us checked in. And then once we were through that, we just, walked right onto the ship and we were on the ship i want to say around 11 o'clock in the morning we were on the ship already yes you were on before we were we uh... yeah we were right behind the bride yeah so yeah all of us that had to go to the priority elite line we actually were behind everyone else that went to the regular line so. yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, i was all right the first one on <laughs> No, you weren't. <laughs> so you get on board. What was your first impressions? What did you think when you were finally stepped foot on this ship that you had been planning to be on for over a year? What was the feelings? What did you what did you think? What did you feel? I felt very emotional. Um, stepping our first steps on the Sky Princess was an emotional minute, just because this we knew what the ship was gonna be. Um but it was very exciting. We went straight to our wedding venue. We had a 12 o'clock meeting with our wedding coordinator. So um, we just went there, dropped all of our stuff off and watched our um, safety video on our phones while we waited for that time. And then we went to our master station and checked in and went back and the rehearsal was starting. Mm -hmm. And so when you went to this rehearsal, that, that was the first time you actually communicated with anybody on the ship about what was going to happen for your wedding, which was coming the next day, right? So you had 24 hours to get this all together on the ship. Yeah, that was the first time I had met my um, onboard wedding coordinator. She had emailed me about, um, I think on Thursday, and this was Saturday. So she had emailed me two days before we got on the ship with incorrect information. Um, so I had to fix that. And then once we got to the rehearsal, that was my first time meeting her, that was my first time seeing the venue, that was my first time seeing how it would be set up or what she had imagined of how it would be set up. It was a lot, um, it was a lot to do less than 24 hours before our wedding. So when you're referring to the venue, the venue was exactly where on the ship? <laughs> the venue was on deck six. It was the take five lounge on deck six forward. Right. And so you're done the rehearsal, you're on the ship, everybody's arrived safely. The temptation must have been to go out and have the Jack and Jill party of, of a lifetime before the cruise the next day or before the wedding the next day. With so all your rival did, party. Did you have a chance to celebrate or was that night full of nerves and planning? No, that was a very relaxed night. We had um, pre-booked our dinners in advance to getting on the ship. So we had a dinner booked with all all of our wedding party and then after that the guys went to the good spirits bar and then they went up to the hot tub and the girls went to karaoke at the princess live lounge um, and then around 10 30 11 o'clock we met up with the guys up at the hot tub and we all just had a nice relaxing night 
<laughs> so that's good. There wasn't any stories of the groom being stuffed in a lifeboat somewhere and looking for him the next day. So it yeah, all worked that, out. That was what I was told was going to happen. So I was, I was keeping an eye. That might have been a fear of. That might have been a fear of mine too. I was very happy to see everybody looked um, very well rested the day of the wedding when I saw them in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I kept a close eye on that groom. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are, day of the wedding. And I'm sure the nerves must have hit. Uh, what did you do in preparation getting up to the wedding? Uh, how does that work on a cruise ship before the actual event? And the event, I believe, was at 2.30. So what happens between waking up and 2.30? So we got up quite early. We got up around seven o'clock, went to the um, Estrella dining room for breakfast. And then we realized that we still hadn't done our seating chart for dinner or our place cards. So we did that very quickly. I had a nine o'clock hair appointment down at the Lotus Spa on deck five. Um, so after we did the seating chart and the place cards, I ran down there and got my hair done. And at that point I had instructed my groom to go and get his stuff out of our cabin and take it to his um, his parents' cabin. And that's where he was getting ready for the day. And then after my hair appointment- That was I the last back. chance to run. <laughs> yeah. We're jumping. We were in the middle of the ocean. So. Where can you go on a ship, right? Yeah. Overboard. <laughs> we had him trapped at that point. <laughs> I had his location on my princess app too. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then you had the groomsmen and the girls and the everybody at separate spots getting ready for the wedding. Yeah. So all the all the girls came over to my cabin and all the groomsmen went over to um, my in-laws' cabin, and everybody got ready there. Mm. Okay, let's talk about the actual ceremony. How did that go? What um, what was the highlight of the how, day, I guess? How do you get in secrecy from your cabin to take five oh. when you got thousands of other people on a ship? Did you? How did that work for you? That was my biggest fear. I thought I was going to have to hire some security and hold bed sheets over me or something. Um, we did wait until everybody got everybody of the wedding guests. My only concern was our wedding guests at that point. I wasn't really concerned about the other cruisers seeing me. It was just, I wanted to make sure everybody who was here for our wedding was in the venue, had a seat and things were good to go. And then once I got that okay, I said, okay, it's safe for me to head over. And then I um, hid in the art gallery until they would close the doors for me to head to the Take 5 lounge because the doors were open when we got there. I could see heads sticking out trying to see me. And the groom was still at the doorway, so I'm like, get him down the aisle so I can come out. <laughs> and so there you are, the doors of the lounge, doors open and you start walking down. How did that moment feel? How did those you know, precious seconds feel as you walked down the aisle? It felt, it flew by and it felt like there was nobody else in that room. It was a very surreal moment. This had been something that has been planned for a year. We had been engaged almost two years and planning this wedding for a year so we were I was very happy to finally be there um, it was very emotional but I, I I held myself together very well I think and so the officiant was actually the captain did the ceremony correctly mm -hmm. yeah that's correct mm -hmm. and he was uh, from understanding actually the captain was there very early before and met mm -hmm. all the guests coming in and even hung around a little bit after yeah, I've got yeah. some pictures of him and the groom chatting, and I didn't get that. I met him after the ceremony, um, right? but he, okay. him and the groom had some conversations before. And how long was the ceremony, generally? Uh, they told me it was supposed to be 30 minutes. I think it, like, for me, it felt like it was five minutes, um, but I, I do think it was about the 30-minute mark. The captain had a few poems that he was saying, um, we exchanged our own vows that we had written for each other. And then um, the captain did a little more things. We did the rings um, and that was it. And then when it was over, did finally all the stress, everything, it all just released and did you feel like it was time to celebrate after? It was, how did that moment feel when you were, finally did that, that, that first kiss? Yeah, it felt, it was good. It, it felt stress-free. Um, afterwards, we all we had to do was go take our go get our pictures taken. I knew we had an hour scheduled for that. Um, there was still a lot to do in the day. I was still there were still some things that I was uncertain about um, for the rest of the wedding day. So those were still weighing on me. But 
the main thing, the biggest thing that was done and over with, and it felt great. So walk us through then the wedding's finished. At that point, what happens with the, you, you, take, you said you had pictures done, uh, the guests, then there was a reception and then a dinner. How did that all play over the rest of the day? Yeah, so after the wedding was done, my wedding coordinator had come up to me and said, if you want to get a picture taken in the bridge, the captain will take you there now. The captain will allow you to do that. So we signed our certificate with the captain and we jumped up and we ran to the bridge, which was um, on deck 14. We took a few pictures there and then we left and we walked around the rest of the ship and did our pictures um, with our wedding party. We did about maybe 20-ish with them. <clears throat> and then we left and did some outside. We did some around, we just had different bars and different spots around the ship. After that, we headed back to the Pig Five Lounge where we had an hour cocktail, a cocktail hour schedule. But I, I guess our guests were allowed to stay. Um, so yes, maybe I can fill in. Sorry, I was just going to say maybe I can fill in a little bit about this. So what we had planned with with the wedding uh, package was that there was going to be a one hour reception there. But yeah. when we actually got to the venue, Song, the wedding coordinator, had said to me, we thought you might enjoy having access to this lounge all afternoon. And the, the bartenders and the waiters were there and they were open for business and we were allowed to, to stay there while the bride and groom were doing their photos yep. elsewhere. And so what was supposed to be a one hour reception turned into being, we had that venue for around three hours. Yeah, right up till dinner time pretty well, yeah. Yeah, and so that was wonderful that Princess allowed us to have that that uh, access. That was really great. So then after the reception piece, uh, it's time for dinner. How does that get orchestrated? Explain to everybody how 50 people work when you're trying to have everybody in the same area for a wedding dinner. Yeah, so we just did it in the main, or in one of the main dining rooms. I think on the Princess cruise ship, on the Sky Princess, there was three. So we did it in the Estrella one. And they had sectioned off an area in the dining room. It was for 50, but it was spread out um, amongst different tables. So there's a table for 12 and a table for 10 and that kind of thing. Um, my man of honor had actually gone while we were getting our pictures taken, had gone and set that all up. So when we got there, um, place cards were out and everything was set up and it was the way I wanted it. Um, and the, the maitre d' at the Australia dining room was extremely helpful. The wait staff was great. Uh, everybody was great. And then once we got into the dining room, they brought out our wedding cake and it was just beautiful. It was a, just a little circle nine inch. And we had talked about it, um, upgrading it, but we figured we're on a cruise ship and people can go and eat desserts and get whatever they want, whenever they want. We're not going to spend the extra money on a wedding cake that we're just going to cut for pictures basically. Cause we had all ordered our own desserts off the dessert menu anyways. Um, they did hand out the cake, but I don't think it was eaten very much, but I don't think any wedding cake really is. The cake was gorgeous though. And, and we had brought our own cake topper that they put on it before they even brought it out for us. So it was great. Now, sure. I definitely want to get to talking about the ship itself and the rest of the week's experience on the Sky Princess, but one last piece. So I, can you explain to everybody how the first dance came to be and how that experience was and maybe how the experience was for other guests that managed to, to become a part of it? Yeah, that was the one thing that I still wasn't certain about. We had a song that we wanted, um, but on the cruise ship, when you don't have that private area reserved for it, it's very kind of up in the air still. So we had gone down, we had left the dining room and gone down to the piazza where we wanted our first dance to be. And they had just stopped the live music, literally just finished. And so we went up to the band and asked them to do one more song just for us to get our first dance done. And they graciously did it and they did an amazing job. And it was, from what I hear, there were people on every floor looking down on us, but in that moment, I didn't I didn't see anybody else there. It was it was just beautiful. Yeah, it, 
it was a beautiful moment. It yeah, really there was, was I, I think what happened is also some of the officers or staff realized what was happening because it was very unscripted that yeah, they went and they crazy. were contacting crew and other officers that were coming rushing to the piazza to see this first dance. And yeah, there was three levels of people, literally hundreds of people watching and staring down. And you probably didn't know it because you were trying not to trip over your dress, but yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. quite a few cameras were going. So I'm sure there's a lot of fellow cruisers that have videos of your first dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been looking at some pictures of it and there's that people have taken the like wedding guests have taken and posted online. And, um, even on the staircases, there's two spiral staircases coming down to the piazza and they're packed with people too. Everybody's just everywhere. And I, I look back at the pictures and I'm like, when did that happen? <laughs> Cause I did not notice that. <laughs> And, that, and that's, I think, part of the magic of getting married on a cruise ship is all of a sudden 50 guests become 3,200, whatever there was, right? And from there, for the rest of the cruise, you became kind of, you know, the person that everybody knew about on the cruise ship, whether you wanted it or not. Everybody knew about you and the group. We were very popular that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, next question is, let's talk about what type of cabin you had and how that all played yeah. out. So we originally, when we booked the wedding, we had to book our cabin to reserve the wedding date. So we had booked ourselves in um, a deluxe balcony. We figured we wanted the extra space um, for the bridal party to get ready on the wedding day. And that was the main reason for that. Flash forward a few months and Princess has decided to upgrade us to a deluxe balcony right next to the cruising Canucks and my grandparents. <laughs> You know, and, and really where the bride and groom want to spend their wedding cruise. You didn't want to be next to us? Really? <laughs> What's wrong with being next to us? I don't understand, guys. Yeah, they moved her midship from a forward uh, uh, balcony room to midship Not next. Not the upgrade we were looking for. Right so next to us. So. They moved us to an aft-facing balcony on deck eight. So the very back of the ship, the one of those balconies that overlooks the ocean. We were very excited about that and we we're really looking forward to having that and that was considered a premier deluxe balcony and then two days before we got on the ship they upgraded us again to a mini suite which is literally right around the corner from our aft facing balcony so that was great we thought well may as well it's our wedding cruise let's take this upgrade from princess so let's talk about the mini suite. Tell me what what was uh, the nicest feature in your mini suite. Um, I would, I think best the biggest difference of the mini suite was there was a bathtub. I didn't use the bathtub on the ship, um, but based on like the deluxe balconies I had been in, that was really the biggest difference. There was a bit more space, which was nice, and I think. I think the deluxe balcony had a love seat and ours had a like a full three seater coach. And it was yeah. it was great. We probably wouldn't wouldn't book it for just the two of us. We don't think that we need that much space. And we also didn't enjoy where the on the ship it was. It was very loud. And once the ship started to move and leave port, your whole room vibrated and shook because it was lower and it was the complete back of the ship. Like and again, it was also far from everything because it was so far in the back of the ship that it took you a while to get to any of the restaurants or to get to any of the bars or really to get anywhere. <laughs> so let's move on and talk a little bit of post-wedding day and the rest of the cruise. Let, yeah, let's just start with basic cruise stuff that everybody's going to want to know. So let's go, first of all, food on the Sky Princess. How did you find it? You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, was there anything that stood out for you that you did? Um, I thought the food was phenomenal. The buffet was ginormous. Oh my goodness. I, I don't even think I went to every station in the seven days. Um, the dining room, of course, was great. I never made it to Alfredo's. I'm very upset about that. Oh, but next time well, we did. <laughs> and we loved it. <laughs> yeah, I heard good things. We did do the winemaker's table. Um, and that is an amazing experience I think everybody should do. It, it does cost more, um, but it was 100% oh, worth it. They, you know, there's five courses and they give you different wine pairings for every course. And then at the end, for us, they had brought out 
again, another little tiny cake and they sung um, happy honeymoon to us to the tune of happy birthday. So of course, <laughs> the waterworks came on that night too. And this is three days after the wedding. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> nice. So you touched on honeymoon. So I want to ask you, um, people wonder what it's like to get married on a cruise ship and then have 50 of your guests kind of stay for the honeymoon itself. Did you get any time to yourself or how did that work after the fact? Or was it a, a wedding cruise only? It, it was a wedding and family cruise. We felt the, we felt the need to make sure that we spent a good amount of time with everybody um, because everybody had flown we had some people from the east coast of Canada. We had people from all over and people that we don't see very often. So we did take that opportunity to spend time with our family and our friends. Um, we do not consider that cruise our honeymoon. We do plan on doing another one this year, later on in this uh, coming winter. So November, December area. But Will it be a princess cruise? Everybody wants to know. <laughs> it is looking like it will be. It's looking like it will be the emerald princess i believe oh hmm. isn't that what our first yeah princess our, our was? first ever out of galveston was, emerald. was an emerald princess i think it's either the emerald or the ruby is the route we want to do there's two options so okay. it's one of those. <laughs> so that's good you'll finally have a chance to have the honeymoon how did you find the entertainment on princess i found that it was good like the live music was great the shows were great everything that we did we enjoyed but we, we did notice that there was one night that we weren't ready to go to bed and we wanted to stay up. And we had some, some people from our wedding party, so some of our friends staying up with us. And once that 11 o'clock hour hit, there was no live music anywhere. And so uh, main theater shows, did you catch many of those? We didn't. We only did one full one. We went to the Elton John one and um, I wasn't feeling that great that night, so I ended up leaving. Um, I was feeling a little bit of emotion at the boat, but then we went to, oh, it was that acrobatic techno technology one. So we, we did go to that one. So I think you saw ones that we didn't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so on this itinerary, there was uh, four different port stops. Which one stood out and, uh, and uh, which one, if you have one that was better than the rest or that you really enjoyed, what was that? Um, so I have done all of these ports before and I, Rotan will always have a special spot in my heart. I think it's a beautiful spot. The ocean is beautiful. The beach is beautiful. Um, Cozumel, you know, it's, it's fun to do stuff. There's stuff to do. We did an excursion in Cozumel and that was fun. That was, it was a good one to do, but definitely I think Rotan won, um, as the best stop on this cruise. We did do um, a private excursion to go see the sloths and the monkeys. And if you have not hugged a sloth in your life, you need to do that. There is no better feeling, like nothing can make you feel so loved than this, mm. this wrapping his heart, his hands around you. It's the yeah. best feeling. Even though while we were there, I was walking past the monkeys and they reached out and grabbed a clump of my hair and pulled me back into the cage. Um, it was still a great excursion. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I lost some hair. And That's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so the million dollar question everybody wants to know: If you booked your wedding on a cruise ship again, would it be princess? Would you do it the same way, or would you do a land-based wedding? How did you feel at the end of all this? No, I think if we were to do it again, I would a hundred percent in a heartbeat do it the way that we did it. Um, I think that I was really nervous for it to be having a different feeling than an at land wedding and having people not enjoy it as much because it's not so structured as an at land wedding is. But I think at the end of the day, it was a beautiful moment and it was a beautiful day. And I think that you would get the same feeling on land that you would at this on sea, but we also, we love traveling and we love the ocean. So it, it made sense for us. And it was the way that we did. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Was there one moment that stood out of the whole wedding that you'll never forget? Oh, obviously the I do's, but was there anything that just kind of caught you by surprise that you'll never, never, you will forget? I don't think so. I think that this whole, I think that there's nothing that sticks out to me. Um, but I think like this whole trip is just something that 
will never will never be forgotten like this was a, a once in a lifetime vacation it like it was it was just perfect yeah it was perfect i felt that yeah. too i think that uh princess couldn't have done a better job for oh, us they yeah. they went above and beyond there were so many people that we were so grateful for that week going from uh, song the wedding coordinator and your personal photographer monique she did a beautiful job we all have gorgeous photos thanks yeah. to her um well i yeah. would even go as far as to say that the other cruisers on the ship made it that much more special we couldn't get my husband and i couldn't get on an elevator or go to a port without somebody saying oh excuse me are you the bride and groom every elevator we got into um, on the beach in Rotan, walking through Cozumel, walking through Costa Maya, which was busy that day, but still everywhere we went, we got noticed and, and people would just all week were congratulating us. And it just, and it was a wedding that didn't stop. It just kept going. You yeah. Instead of being one day. Yeah. yeah the, the perfect wedding that lasts seven days. So, right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> perfect. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us, Mackenzie. Yes, thank you. And uh, yeah, we were so proud of you as parents. It was phenomenal and we really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Yeah, it was everything we hoped and dreamed it would be. So uh, we had a wonderful time and, and overwhelmingly every guest that was there said the same thing. There were people that were first time cruisers that can't wait to get back on a princess ship. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you and all the best to you and uh, the husband now. It still sounds weird to say that. Uh, our son-in-law. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, take care. Bye. Love you. Love Bye. You So that wraps up our first ever episode. Yeah, and let's hope the rest of them aren't as emotional as that one. But uh, yeah, we just thought that maybe, I mean, we had great impressions, but we wanted to share with all of you what the bride thought. And, yeah. you know, coming from someone that's, you know, in her 20s, as opposed to someone our age, there's different elements that we take from our experiences. Yeah. And so moving forward, if you are going a cruise and you want to tell us all about how it went and explain to us, uh, we always love to learn about new ships and vacations and ports. Yeah. Uh, definitely get in touch with us here. Uh, you can uh, email us at Jill and Jerry at cruisingconnects.ca or go to our YouTube channel, Instagram, reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about your uh, yes. adventure as well. We would love to do it. So take care, everybody. And until next time, stay safe. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.